aviation and defense universe is carrying an army day special for army day 2020 in this series today we have the interview of mayor general love bikram chan from corps of signals sir we are very honored to have you with yes. us for this army day special uh, i would like to know for you from you on this army day as to what is the status of signals and communications at this moment in the army All right so that's a very uh, apt question to start with uh, communications have always traditionally got to precede the systems being put in place and keeping this ethos in place signals has always been one step ahead of what was the requirement of the army and then in terms of the weapon systems or the logistics that we already had. As of now, when you look at it, the current status, we are actually a step ahead or maybe just maybe an inch ahead. But certainly there are certain processes have been put in place to make sure that the being ahead of the requirements in terms of communications of the entire army and especially the changing world order and the changing concepts of operations. Uh, we will be well ahead of that. Uh, that is something which uh, I can assure that uh, as of now when you are looking at it, the communication infrastructure is uh, in place. Yes, there has been a little setback, I am not calling it actually a setback, but there have been delays in uh, implementation of the tactical communication system in the TBA, primarily looking at the communication systems at the teeth of the armed forces fighting forces. Notwithstanding that, um, uh, the procedural delays uh, were there, but certain measures have been taken up to fill up the gap, the operational void, which is with, with uh, TCS and without TCS. Uh, way back in uh, two, year 2002, there was a detailed study carried out, which was also present to the MO, which was carried out as the provision of communications to the tax c 3 i in the pre-TCS era. So, with keeping that as a uh, guideline, uh, steps have been made, but yes, they're all piecemeal courts, that is commercially off the uh, shelf procurements, which don't or which may not meet the requirement of the uh, digital battlefield, which is uh, at the annual and which is facing us. Oh, I see. Uh, sir, you, you see the, uh, these days, the, there is so much of networking concentric or networking centric, we can say, uh, shift in the system, communication system, the core of signals. Now, with that happening, uh, how does it impact uh, the working and the requirement of equipment and uh, otherwise of the course because now the traditional uh, style of signal communication you know the lineman going up there is the pole is obsolete it is so what you said so as the uh, battle fighting concepts evolve right from the trench warfare to the mechanized warfare of the second world war to the present, what we hear of the uh, capabilities of uh, the uh, Western world. Uh, with that, the, there's a need for all the fighting resources, whether it is a weapon system, whether it is a sensor, or whether it is the commanders who are going to uh, press the trigger, or the maintenance, repairs, all of them when you integrate it. That is what it comes from a point-to-point -point communications or a platform-centric communications. Now you become network-centric yeah. so that you can very really effectively make use of your optimum power and efficiency of each and every system. The sum total becomes very big and that is why in NCW or network-centric warfare, many a times even they refer to it now as an effect-based warfare because it is all based on what is going to be the effect 
on the target. Maybe it, is, it could be a target, could not be just a, a, a maybe a tactical target. It could be also the political target or strategic target or mind of people. So when, when you're having effect-based operations, in this case, when you're looking at the first and foremost entry to the system is uh, communication. So yes. That is the physical layer. So when you look at it, when the ESCON systems came up or when you look at FNET which has come up or when you look at the uh, naval enterprise wide network which has come up, all these three services have their own networks which are providing them the physical layer of as an enabler or as an entry ticket to NCW operations. So that way it is in place but today NCW also has become a thing of the past. Today the battlefield is um, uh, is a digitized, totally digitized battlefield. Also the warfare is going to be autonomous. Uh, if you look at the uh, strike of by the US, uh, the, recent the recent strike, Suleiman. Suleiman strike, which was on a total autonomous, right from tracking uh, a target uh, through various sensors. And these sensors need not only be uh, electronic, there could be also the human uh, sensors and then autonomous vehicle, to, uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, drone took off in case the target with precision, that is the kind of uh, warfare that we are looking at. So when you are looking at this step, the networks of the current generation uh, may not survive or may not, uh, I, okay, not survive, they may, firstly they may not meet the requirement. Yes. And secondly, when I say they'll not survive us because of the networks are now going to become the target of cyber warfare. Mm -hmm. And when there are so many agencies or entities to be integrated, with each increase in the number by one, that is one additional window that you open up. And that is why I said that is a entry window for a cyber hacker attack. So when you look at all these uh, networks, so Today when we are looking at just a couple of years back as next generation networks, now they are also becoming a thing of the past. Today you call something as a future network. So these are future networks, how are they? They are that with the internet of things, irrespective of who is going to be the entity, everybody is stitched into a common fabric and the binding of the common fabric is communications. Second also is these are networks are intelligent. If you want to see a data, like you, when you are doing a Google search, your search patterns are there. Now this aspect has been brought into the networks and they call them as data aware networks. Okay. So as a result, the, the keeping, this is actually required because of the fast pace of the operations. So that whatever is required of good situational awareness, in the time frame of the matching with the timelines and the speed of the operations or the battle is uh, the digital battlefield is going to be meeting open. This is where the void exists in the in the in the networks, and it's it's not a void void which has been uh, something which um, uh, was uh, you know not thought of. It was, but unfortunately, the way the technology has advanced advanced that you are already looking at a different concept of networks, uh, saying that, because there's a very uh, important aspects of how to, you know, win an operation in an environment of a digi totally digital battlefield. All that you need to do is, in a systematic manner, based on priority, you can always upgrade your next generation networks to the future networks. When you do that, you will find that the networks are so intelligent and even if the networks are so robust, the networks are so secure that firstly, even if you want to enter a network, uh, you know, you will be permitted to enter if you are authenticated and if you are permitted. And not only that, if my role is a, is a logistician, I will be able to give a, a role-based network. Okay. So that is where uh, it's going to be uh, coming up and actually the uh, network for Spectrum or the FNIP is going to be meeting this requirement. I think you have appreciated and analyzed this very well. Now, what comes out from this is that 
the technology advancement, technological advancement is uh, making all the changes in the way that battles are being fought today or maybe fought tomorrow. Now, with that in mind, what will be the code, what will be the wish list of the core of signals? So, uh, it's, a, it's a really interesting question. For a communicator, it is much easier to adapt to technology, but there is one uh, aspect where a communicator fails and that is meeting the aspirations of the people. Today if you look at it, uh, when we got commissioned, it was a point to point there, we didn't have uh, radios, even that walkie talkies or things were not uh, seen. If yes. you want to have that, you have to have a license and one didn't see it. Today with everybody having a mobile and such a powerful uh, tool. system tool, so anybody who is now entering into the and wearing a uniform is comparing that if I can do this with a mobile, why can't my army communication system or the defense communication system provide me the same kind of facility? Mm -hmm. So the first, the wish list can be very uh, big, yes. right? But the first thing which could, could be that my, as a vision, the all communicators. We are seeing all communicators because today it is not only. Army, Navy, or Air Force, just all encompassing, they'll have one version that they should be able to provide a network which is secure, robust, reliable, low latency, and make it available to a, any authorized user wherever and whenever he requires it. It could be on our own side of the IV, it could be across the IV, or it could be if the naval is blue water. Navy, which is going to be there, even if they are deployed two continents across, they should be able to make use and provide the communication to them. That is the first vision or the uh, you know the set, if I can summarize, should be there. Okay. With this wish list, today if I look at uh, signals, every communicator, they would now look at something which is the software defined radio, primarily because the it gets it gives intelligence to the system. Uh, then, with the network for spectrum which is coming up, which is going to be a tri-service network for Army, Navy and Air Force. Of course, Air Force already has had that because of the prioritization of the National uh, Air Defense Security Integrated uh, that they got it first. This is also going to be coming up. So, with this, the wish list would be that networks for spectrum should come up at the earliest. There's been a inaugurate delay. Second is the software defined radio comes up. The third would be that let's have a very good indigenous encryption system. The bulk encryption system which we are continuing with point to point or end encryption is not going to work. There is a need for a public key infrastructure based encryption system which is being used world over. So that is going to be a major, major wish list of the armed forces that these policies and processes have to be put in place. Next wish list should be when I say intelligent networks, there is going to be so much of data which is going to be available. So you have to have your data centers which are already there, uh, they are all with the respective services, they are the three services yes. and even within uh, the three services, Army, Navy or Air Force, uh, the Line directories based on them also have the data centers. So we want all these data centers should be a common repository of data resource. As you know, data is power in the current uh, IT world. On top of this, you should have business intelligence so that the correct, analyzed, corroborated information is passed on to the uh, man who's actually fighting about who needs it. This is the third in the wish list. Another aspect is to support the modern battlefield, we need to have artificial intelligence and autonomous, supporting autonomous, autonomous weapon platforms. So if this is what I can summarize what should be the wish list, uh, which, which should happen in, uh, in the near future. I think, think you summarized very well. Oh, thank you. And, uh, 
very analytically you have done it. Uh, chant, you know, it is not only uh, thinking, but now it is almost taken for granted that we'll have joint operations and we'll have integ integrated battle groups. And with that coming, uh, I think the requirement for signals is going to drastically change. That's our perception. Uh, what is your comment on that? Uh, I will not say that the signals will drastically change. Mm -hmm. the, 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 uh, it will not be a major challenge uh, as far as the concept is concerned. Because uh, if you look at traditionally signals, from all brigade headquarters upwards, the signals were already providing a communication to all brigade headquarters irrespective of what arm of service they were. Whether it was an artillery, AD, aviation uh, base, or uh, for that matter, logisticians. So you were already there. So communication was never ever meant for a, a in, in compartments. All that was happening was the fabric of the communication was omnipresent, common, but the prioritization of, if I may also put it simply, r rationing of that communication systems was done. Yes. For example, if there was a call to be put through for a uh, GOC in a division, he would be in the priority number one. one. A second left and make it much later. <laughs> right? So that is how the prioritization was there because of the, uh, for a scarce resources. Yes. So traditionally, the communication systems have to be omnipresent. Traditionally, it can be a plug and play. That anybody who wants it, if he's within the, uh, I say, a footprint or the shadow of a communication node, he just plugs it in and he's uh, through. So that way, I don't think there'll be a major challenge as far as the communication infrastructure is concerned. Uh, but this is one that we are getting. There will be certain adjustments which will have to be made. For example, with the fast flow of the battle and the sidestepping of resources that is going to take place, the attachments, detachments which will be so swift, the weapon system, long range weapon systems which is going to shoot and scoot, yes. the way they are going to connect. Now, how to in this intense, there, how to firstly permit a person to plug in and how to make sure that his communications are reliable and there's not time consuming to discover a new entity which is plugged in. So with this, it's going to be a challenge. Yeah. Cyber security is going to be a major issue and also uh, the reach of communications towards the logisticians which has been a weak point has to be addressed. Uh, very, very nicely brought out that uh, it is not a major, ma very major issue with the IBGs and joint operations. The other point comes up is, uh, you know, this uh, question of uh, intra, um, intra, uh, and, uh, communication and uh, cyber security. Now, cyber security is another aspect uh, which is uh, a great concern these days and uh, I think signals, I'm sure, will have a major role in this. Yes. Uh, so what do you say yes. about it? Yeah. Uh, firstly, sir, let me just also, you know, the, just a, a few seconds back when I told you that uh, the headquarters are well corrected. Yeah. Certainly in the IBG, the battalions and the smaller battle groups their communications have to be enhanced considerably because the TCS is not in place. Mm. Mm. But TCS is catering for that in terms of the field wireless system mm. uh, or they'll have a uh, communication on mobile, the software defined radio they're looking at. Even the mobile systems of uh, in the mesh many, that is a, uh, that is a the mobile ad hoc networks are catering for that. If they, if they don't come, come in place, the integrated battle group will have a major issue. So, secondly, another important point is that if you don't have the seamless interconnection between the Army, Navy and Air Force, yeah. it will be a major issue. Integrated theater battle is not only the ground force, it is a 
integration of all the dimensions. Yes. And one of the dimensions, of course, is cyber, and which is a very, very, uh, it's a dimension which can be exploited without anybody knowing whether it is in peace, war, or no war, no peace. And you cannot do that. That is where the cyber, what you ask, becomes very important. Yeah. In cyber, in my view, you should have two aspects. One is a network or communication security, that's defensive cyber, and the other is offensive. Offensive means you're actually hacking and denying something. Yes. It should not be for hacking attack. It's a very niche field. That should not be with the civils. But certainly communicators should be having the defensive cyber of protecting their networks. And to put it straight, the one who's protecting the network cannot be the examiner. Mm -hmm. So the auditors could be somebody else. They have to look out look at. If in joint means maybe the army can audit naval uh, networks. Navy, Army there, or as is being done today, the Army Cyber Group or the uh, various uh, CERT, Army, Navy or Air Force are doing it. But they are very minuscule, ill-equipped organization mm -hmm. under MO. So that is how we look at how the auditing or the examining of these networks of cyber can be done. We were listening to Major General Love Chand and he has very nicely uh, analyze the complete gambit of various aspects of Code of Signals and especially the, the integrated battle groups, the joint operations, the inter-services uh, communication problems and the cyber crime. Uh, we are very grateful to you sir for this uh, very interesting and illuminating talk. Thank you very much. Thank you.